Good morning and welcome to Little River United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are, you're welcome here. I want to just give a special shout out to Dan Jimenez, who is with us from Spain this morning. Uh, Dan, travel safely. We miss you and hurry back home. Good to see all of you with us this morning. There's some exciting events that are taking place here at the church over the next week, uh, including this Friday, October 29th, we will have a fun and film event. That's for everyone, all ages. We ask you to bring your snacks, your drinks, your chairs, enjoy the movie, and we will be outside. However, if it's incremental, then we will come inside on, um, on, on Friday evening. Uh, this Sunday is the last day for gift cards for our Afghan refugee donation drive and hygiene donation drive to support two local shelters, Sasha Bruce Youth Work and Friends of Guest House. A big thank you to everyone for your generous donations for these very important organizations. Fellowship Hour will be held this Wednesday, October 27th at 1230 here at the church on campus on the patio. This is an opportunity for everyone to enjoy some enriched time together to visit and get to know each other better. All are welcome. Everyone is encouraged to bring your own lunch or snack, bring your own drinks, and if the weather is not conducive for outside seating, arrangements will be made for us to come indoors. All Saints Day is Sunday, November 7th. We will have prayers of thanksgiving for loved ones who have died during the past 12 months. We invite you to contribute the names of your family members or close friends whose loss you continue to mourn. Please email or call the church with the names of those loved ones. The church office will be closed on Monday and Tuesday, November 1st and 2nd for carpet cleaning. Church staff will be working remotely. We will be available to everyone, available to answer phones, take care of emails, but we need volunteers here at the church on Sunday, October 31st, next Sunday after worship, to help move the office furniture into the atrium. So come and help us out in, in moving the furniture if you would. And as part of our church's stewardship campaign, we have a brand new video that has been produced. It's beautiful and is available on Facebook, YouTube, and website our www.lrucc.org website. We invite you to view this brand new video as we continue with our stewardship campaign. Those are our announcements this morning. Let us together be in worship. Good morning. Would you please join me in the call to worship? Sing aloud with gladness. God is gathering the people. From the farthest parts of the earth we come, all who struggle, all who labor with new life. Those who are weeping, God will console. Those who get lost find a clear path home. Let us worship the God who gathers us.
Let us pray. Ever calling God, we give thanks that you have gathered us into your church and graced us with your faithful presence. We ponder our history, ancient and still developing, and marvel at the many expressions of your church. Grant us the vision to be a part of this new moment in your church that will bring ever more joy and justice to the world. Continue to gather us, the diverse lot of us, into Jesus' vision and dream that your faithful people may be one in you. Amen. We invite you now, wherever you may be, to join us in passing the peace. For those of you who are with us virtually, we invite you to use the chat to share your peace with us all, all over the world. And for those of us who are here in the sanctuary, the peace of Christ be with you. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you are known by many names and always available to your people when we call out to you. Deepen our faith. Expand our knowing of your wondrous works. Bring your light into our lives so we can see clearly your magnificent presence. Help us to never take you for granted, but help us to be amazed by your grace and your mercy. Amen.
Our first reading this morning is from the book of Psalms, Psalm 126, a harvest of joy. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses in the Negeb. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Our gospel reading this morning is from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. They came to Jericho, and as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This concludes the reading of this morning's gospel. Will you pray with me? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. You know, when you hear the story of Bartimaeus, you got to love the guy. He had gumption. He was unapologetic, unashamed, and unafraid. Even when his friends would say, Shh, hey, man, cool it, he got louder. He got bolder. He got public because he was on a mission. A person who could not see with his eyes, but he knew what was going on. He, he, he reminds me of Stevie Wonder. Little Stevie Wonder, this incredibly talented man. You, you know who Stevie is, right? You've heard the name somewhere, right? This, this man who not only sings but plays multiple instruments has no sight, cannot see. He is what we call blind. He's Bartimaeus. He is in our midst. He's now moved to Ghana. He's made a choice in his, his future living arrangements. But, but, but Stevie Wonder, a person who could not see but makes the most beautiful music, sings out loud, sings proud, sings with all the gumption and gifts that he has, plays multiple instruments. He will not be silent. He will not be stopped. He will not cease being Stevie because God has given him an incredible gift. A genius, in fact. Owns a radio station in Los Angeles. Goes all over the world using his gifts. Bartimaeus was Stevie of his day. The only reason we know Bartimaeus is because he would not shut up. He would not be quiet. He would not accept his plight as a blind person in a society who cast those who were disabled aside. He spoke up. He shouted out. He heard that Jesus of Nazareth was in town. He couldn't see him, but he felt his presence. And he wanted Jesus to know, I'm here. And when the people said, man, be quiet, he got louder. <laughs> he got bolder. He became even more public. And because of that, Jesus says, who is that? It's the son of Timaeus. 
It's Bartimaeus, Timaeus Jr., if you would, making all that noise in public, shouting out, saying, Jesus, son of David, giving an identity not only of Jesus the person, but a context, a cultural historical context. Because as we know, David, who comes through Ruth and Boaz, we'll learn more about that, through that lineage comes David. Through that lineage comes Joseph, married to Mary, gives birth to Jesus. Jesus, son of David. Bartimaeus would not be quiet. Bartimaeus would not be decent and in order. He was loud, he was proud, he wanted results, and we know his name today. Speaking up and speaking out. Here's a person who's going forward in faith because he believed in the possibility of change. He used what he had to get Jesus' attention. Because of his faith, Jesus says, well, what do you want? You're shouting out, you call my name. What do you want? He says, let me see again. Let me have my sight back. He knew what he needed. He knew what he wanted. And he knew the right source to get what he needed. He knew Jesus was there for him. And he called out. He wouldn't let this experience, this moment, pass him by silently, quietly, politely, sitting in a corner as blind people were forced to do. He didn't have his hand out. He had his mouth open. He was prepared for a change to come in his life. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Going forward in faith, believing in the possibility. We come into this sanctuary every week. We come gathered as the people of God. Do we open our mouths? Do we shout out? Do we proclaim? Or do we silently, decently, politely go about our business? Jesus is calling for a different kind of reality today, a different kind of presence. He's calling for the Bartimaeus of today to speak up and to speak out, to go forward in faith, to let people know that something is going on and that we have the calling out to bring to people's attention a world that God has designed for us. We are called to be people who are willing to open our mouths. Open our mouths on behalf of those who have been rendered mute and invisible in our society. We have been called as the people of God to speak up and stand up, not only for ourselves, as Bartimaeus did that, that, that Sunday morning, I want to believe, when Jesus was passing through. But we are called today. We are called to speak up and speak out for those who have been rendered invisible and unnecessary and told to just live in misery quietly. Don't disturb the peace. We are peace breakers, peace disturbers. John Lewis calls it getting into what? Good trouble. Creating a different reality, a different space for people who have been left out, left behind, cast aside, rendered invisible and mute. We are called to speak up and speak out to move forward in faith. During this Stewardship Sunday, we are called to use our gifts, to take our talent, our time, and our tithes, and make contribution of ourselves, making ourselves even more valuable than we can realize. From our pocketbook to our handout, we are called as the people of God to go forward in faith, to believe in the possibility of that which others have rendered impossible, rendered invisible, rendered unconcerned, we are called to bring to our attention the people who have been left out and left behind, to speak up, stand up, and speak out on their behalf. We are called a peculiar people. Bartimaeus is giving us an example this morning. He, he was doing it because he knew that something special was going on, that Jesus had come to town and he was not going to miss this opportunity. Even when the people said, man, be quiet. Don't embarrass yourself. Don't embarrass us. Just live with your misery and live in your misery silently. Bartimaeus would have none of that. He would speak up and he would speak out and he would call Jesus and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. We are called today to use our gifts, to use our talents, to give our time so that others can realize the gift of Christ in their lives today. So many people have given up. Why? Because the people of God have been silent. Why? Because the people of God have rendered those in greatest need invisible, cast to the side, walked past, walked around, never discussed, never spoken to, never spoken up on their behalf. But we're called today 
to speak for those who have been rendered mute and invisible. We are called today as the people of God to have the gumption to dare to be publicly embarrassed because we are speaking up for justice. We're speaking up for righteousness. We're speaking up for people who have been left out and left behind. If we fail to do that, then we are, we are missing the vote. If we have mouths and we don't use them, if we have eyes and we don't see, if we have ears and we don't hear, we are worse than Bartimaeus. We have the gifts. We have the physicality. We now must have the audacity to be courageous and bold, to speak up and be embarrassing. So other people will say, can't you just be quiet about that? No, I can't be quiet about it. I will not be quiet about injustice. I will not be quiet about people being rendered invisible in our society that has more resources than any one group of people deserve to have. We will not be quiet. There is no reason for poverty to exist in the United States today, wealthiest nation on the planet. There is no reason for people not being able to go to a hospital today because health care is beyond their means. There's no reason for people to lose their homes when they get sick and go to the hospital and they can't pay their mortgage or they can't pay their rent. We cannot be quiet about that. We cannot be invisible in the midst of misery. We cannot be silent when people are crying out. Bartimaeus has the audacious, bodacious, courageous ability. When others say be quiet, he gets louder. He gets more public. He says, Jesus of David, son of David, have mercy on me. We must go forward with our gifts, our time, our talent, and our tithes. We must go forward not only on our behalf, but on behalf of those who depend on us. That's what Stewardship Sunday is all about. How do we gather our resources for the benefit of others? How do we share the gifts that God has given to us, to people who are waiting for us to stand up and speak out on their behalf? That was Bartimaeus. We cannot be blind to what is in front of us. We cannot be silent in the midst of people living with misery. We cannot hold our gifts to ourselves and hoard it to ourselves in the midst of poverty and people in need. No, Bartimaeus gives us an example of public audacity to speak up. He was speaking up for himself. But what happens when, when Jesus says, who is that? And ask him, what do you want with me? And he says, let me see again. Give me back my sight. And the story doesn't end with Jesus saying, so it is. No, that's not where it ends. It doesn't end with Bartimaeus getting sight. It doesn't end there. That's the beginning of his mission. He then becomes a follower of Christ. He joins the band of those who are close and intimate with Christ. That's why we know the story today. He doesn't take his sight and go wandering off, but he becomes more engaged in the lives of people just like himself. People who have been cast to the curb, cast aside, ignored, rendered invisible in society. Bartimaeus becomes one with Christ. He becomes a follower of Christ. Where Christ goes, Bartimaeus is right there with him. That's why we know his name today. We are called today to take the story of Timaeus Jr., Bart, the son of Timaeus, to take his story and use it as a source of inspiration, information, and instruction for us today. What do we do with our time, our talent, and our tithes on this Stewardship Sunday? What do we do with them? How do we use them beyond ourselves? How do we place ourselves in the lives of others? How do we hear the cry of Bartimaeus today? Do we tell him to be quiet, or do we call him forward? What do we do with the people in our communities, in our nation, in our society who have been left out and left behind? Ronald Reagan did a crazy thing when he became president in 1981. He called the Undersecretary of Labor when we had high unemployment. And instead of providing jobs, he changed, he changed how they calculated unemployment. You remember that. After 26 weeks, you were erased from the employment line. After 13 weeks, you're given a notice. After 26 weeks, if you don't have a job under Ronald Reagan, you're not unemployed. That's how unemployment went down in 1981. Not because people got jobs, but they got erased. That was the action of Ronald Reagan, who did that on our behalf as the people of America. Did we speak up? Did we stand up? Did we shout out? No, we didn't. We were silent. And that practice has continued right up till today. But we are called as the people of God, 
to be witnesses for those who can't speak for themselves, for those who are not seen, for those who are rendered invisible. Bartimaeus, be quiet, man. He says, I will not be quiet. He got louder. He got bolder. And because of that, he went from blind to a person who could see. He became a person we remember today. I'm saying to us, take seriously this moment. I'm saying to us, take seriously what it means to walk in the path of Christ. It's not enough to come to church, look good, smell good, and have a good time. We must get into the roughness of life itself. We must get into the dirt of life itself. We must crawl with those who have been rendered to the curb. We must be a different and bold people today. That's why we're here to have the courage to go into a world where they won't love us for speaking up for those who are invisible, where they won't congratulate us for standing in defense of those who are defenseless. But we must do it. We must be Bartimaeus today. We must take the realities of others and make it personal. We must speak for those who have been kicked to the curb and left behind, those who have been erased by the policies of Reagan that continues through Biden. We must call their names and give their bodies and give them life and give them presence. That's what Bartimaeus did. Bartimaeus would not be quiet. He would not be silent. When they said, man, don't make so much noise, you're a public embarrassment, he got louder, he got bolder. And because he spoke up, because he spoke out, Jesus says, who is that? Who is that? Jesus is waiting to hear us today. Jesus wants to hear our voices. Jesus wants to know that we are here and that we care. Jesus wants us to take our time, our talent, and our, thigh, and our tithes and give the best of ourselves so that others can just live, so that others can be seen and can be heard, can be recognized and attended to. We are called out of the world so that we can give ministry and service to those in the world. What will we do with this? Do we allow Bartimaeus to live back at a different time in a different culture in a different place? Or do we bring him up to date? Do we see Bartimaeus in the lives of people around us? Do we hear their cries? Do we see their pain? Do we even have the gumption to care about those we're meeting for the first time? Or do we pretend as if everything is okay? The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and everything is okay. It's not okay. It's a crying shame. That's what my mama would say. It's a crying shame what is happening to people in this country today and what this country is doing all over the world to people in places who are damaged by the foreign policies of this nation. Do we just say we have nothing to do with that? Do we sit silently and pretend as if we don't know? People are crying out today. People are waiting for the people of God to stand up, to shout out, to speak up on their behalf. We are called. We are called the people of God, followers of Christ. Just as Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, Timaeus Jr., spoke up on his behalf because the society was quite comfortable with him being blind, and they would appreciate it if he would just be quiet about it. We are quite comfortable with people suffering silently, invisibly today. We're quite satisfied with that. We're not rising up. We're not calling out. We're not seeking to make significant change, change that needs to be done. We're comfortable. We're relaxed. We're doing OK. Bartimaeus, be quiet. And Bartimaeus said, I can't be quiet. I can't be quiet. I know that a change is going to come. I know when I speak up, Jesus will respond. I'm going to get louder. I'm going to get bolder. I'm going to be audacious and courageous. I'm going to be unashamed, unafraid, and unapologetic. Bartimaeus says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I'm inviting us this morning to move forward in faith, to believe that God has already answered our prayers even before we can formulate the thought in our mind. I want us to believe with absolute certainty our time in this place now is to bring about significant change, not only in society, but in the world. I want us to know the power that we have the ability to speak up, speak out, embarrass your mother's name as Bartimaeus embarrassed the, the people around him. Be quiet, man. Keep still. Keep silent. But Bartimaeus, 
he wasn't quiet. He wasn't still. He definitely wasn't silent. And because he spoke up, we're calling his name today. What are we going to do with the eyesight that we have, with the mouths that we have, with the ears that we have, with the brain that we have, with the heart that beats inside of us? What are we going to do with our hands and our feet on behalf of those who are invisible and silent today? Rendered mute, erased from the rolls. Ronald Reagan should be ashamed of himself. And if we don't speak up, we need to be ashamed of ourselves. For Bartimaeus is in our midst today. Jesus, the body of Christ, is right here, right here. How do we listen? How do we hear? How do we respond? For this is the gospel. Praise be to God. I'm Bruce Summers, back again. And I have to speak loud so that I can match Reverend Art. Reverend Art, thank you very much. Um, and we want to thank each and every one of you who are here today and those of you who are online and those of you who have stuck with us through the pandemic. And as our theme is moving forward with faith, I think Reverend Art gave us a lot to think about. What does that mean? What will that define how we're looking for our next settled pastor, what we're looking to do individually? Um, we're doing fine with the stewardship campaign. We've already brought in 38 gifts. I'd like to get about another 82 to 85 pledges. So if you have not, this is our final week as far as our push. We'll continue the campaign until we hopefully meet our goal. But if you've been sitting on the side and you haven't made your pledge yet, you can make a pledge online. You can make it by turning it in. There's a, a box right next to the office where you can turn in the pledge. There's even pledge cards there. Um, we've brought in about $231,000. We're trying to reach at least 560. We would love to get to $575,000. But overall, thank you for what each of you does do, for when you do speak out, for when you do remember and remind people uh, you know, that there are, there are social issues. In 1967 and 68, our congregation and our pastors were very involved in the People's Campaign. I think it's, it's interesting to explore that history, and you'll see a little bit of that in the video that will be online. Thanks. Good morning, I'm Sue Leathers. Uh, when I came back into the area, uh, for a lot of you who know me know that I left almost three years ago. And when I heard what it was gonna be this year, the stewardship, I immediately thought about pay it forward. I had just finished listening to a Christian radio station <clears throat> and they were doing this pay it forward. If you're in a line, like at McDonald's, um, pay for the person behind you. So I'm like listening to them, kind of fascinated by this. And by the time they were done, they were into the 35th car and the 37th car. And this was something that they did a lot of. And then I, I asked, I told Bruce I wanted to say something because I know when, like I said, when we talk about stewardship, a lot of people kind of, one eye goes closed a little. But it's so important. You guys, I came back here to Northern Virginia because of this church. That is the truth. I couldn't find a church that would settle my soul and I'm too old for that. So I came back where I belonged with people I belonged with. This church will not run on air. So I am a, you know, pay it forward girl. If I pay and I do what I can do, I want this church to be here next year for the people we haven't met. But they'll be here and they'll need us. They get the music, fabulous. They get the preaching, fabulous. And also the pastoral care. For 20 years, that has kept me sane. Through my dad's passing, Vern. 
through my, through my Aunt Franny, who joined a church two weeks before she died because of this church in her life and joined at home. And I mean, there is so much. So when it, when it comes time to talk about giving, I just, yeah, where, when, and what can I do about it? But I think you have to think. I've always been taught when it comes to that. My dad was like that. You got to think about it. You got to figure not where it fits into your whatever, but where does it fit into your soul? And these last couple of years have been kind of negative, and I was reading, and I love this, for all of the negative world thoughts that even sneak into the churches, and I know it. Negative thoughts are like birds. You can't keep them from flying around your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your hair. And my whole thing about this giving and whatever is, you know, do what you can do. Don't feel guilty. I mean, people get all into this, oh, I can't, whatever and whatever. You do what you can do, but you need to pray about it. You need to talk to your family about it. That's serious business. But if we're going to be here, we need to be here next year. And we need to all be here and, you know, do what we can do. But the money part keeps the building and keeps the care. And, you know, when you're in the middle of this, like I say, all this negativity, just remember, don't let it plant a little nest in your hair. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Bruce. Um, it is our time of offering, and uh, you can give your offering to Little River by mailing a check to the church or by visiting the Donate online page on our website. If you're here in the sanctuary, there will be an usher um, as you exit the sanctuary if you'd like to give your offering then. Let us pray. Creator God, you are an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. We ask you to accept this offering of your people. Remember in your love those who have brought it. Remember also those persons and purposes for which it is given. As we lay our offerings before you, extend and multiply their reach, as Jesus by the Sea of Galilee extended and multiplied the loaves and the fishes, so that all who hunger may be filled. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Let us be in prayer together. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, you're known and called by many names. You present yourself emphatically and quietly in our lives. With each rising sun, you renew us. You call us closer to you. With every opportunity, you bind us together. The calls for prayers this morning come from various voices near and far away, but they enter into your ears and you are responsive because you are our God. Thank you, O oh God, for having faith in us and deepening our faith in you. Thank you for renewing our lives. Thank you for every breath that we take. We thank you, O oh God, for this time that you have ordained for us to break our lives, slow our pace, to be reverent in this space. We thank you for caring so much about us, never leaving us or forsaking us, but emphatically present with and within us. Thank you, O oh God. We thank you for coming to us as one of us through your son, Jesus. 
Thank you for experiencing life as humans experience it. Thank you for knowing us even better than we know ourselves. We thank you for touching our lives, lifting us up, and healing us. Thank you for inspiring us to go to places we have never been, to imagine things we had never thought previously. Thank you, O oh God, for believing in us. We thank you for each one who has gathered here. We thank you for anticipating our calling out to you and responding even before the thought was formulated in our minds or uttered through our mouths. You're so faithful. For those who are traveling at a distance, be their traveling companion. Let them feel you and know that you are with them and take them safely to their destinations. For those this morning who are sick and frail, we pray that your healing touch will be upon them, that you will raise them up. For those who are grieving, those who are mourning, those who know the experience of loss of loved ones, we pray, O oh God, that you will be a source of comfort and that we as a community will give comfort to them as well. Receive us just as we are. Push us to go into your world, to go into it as your faithful people. Help us to open our mouths, our eyes, and our ears as a relevant presence in your world to your people. And now we pray the prayer as Jesus taught his disciples, as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
My sisters and my brothers, our time of worship has ended. Now it is time for our service to begin. We have been called to leave the sanctuary and to go into the world as the people of God who are unafraid, unashamed, and unapologetic. And so we go now to be audacious, bodacious, and courageous. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. For those of you who are online, our coffee hour will start in about five minutes, and our prayer formation team will meet immediately in the conference room. Thank you for being with us.